we are. I found this uh, this enamel pin uh, on the countertop at the restaurant next door to the store where I work. Um, and I'm assuming the servers found it on the floor and the pin back had broken off of it so it couldn't stick to anything anymore. So I decided to re-solder that on with uh, mixed success. Uh, I needed to start off by removing the excess solder from the old pin back uh, without doing too much to scuff up the back. Uh, and I got some fairly good success with this. You can see this, uh, this sanding drum does a pretty quick job of removing that extra material. The next we have to kind of consult our uh, tote of parts. I have several of these. I think they were two dollars. I got them on sale at Menards. And about two dollars. It's got some jewelry parts in it, including these pin backs uh, that I've accumulated for dice that didn't turn out right. Uh, so I had to find some way to attach that. And I was, I've said in a couple videos, I actually don't have a lot of experience with soldering for uh, accessories and jewelry, and that kind of comes out uh, in this video. Uh, I try this soldering, I think, three different times. Alright, so first thing is uh, we need to find some way to make it so that we can bond everything. So I'm using some paste, some flux paste here, to make it so that when I melt the solder it will actually bond to this metal. Otherwise we won't have a chance really. Um, and here's actually the first attempt. Uh, I try to get some solder to bond to it and I tried for quite a while to get it to just make some sort of a uh, connection uh, with very little success. You can see I skipped ahead there's some solder on the pin that's really dark and burnt and not great and there's also solder on the pin back that I started with on the bottom right of the frame there. And uh, I just did not feel like trying to clean that off and get it to work. So I decided to try to work with the blob that was there. And by pushing down, you want to just spray out to the, to the left right there. Obviously, it did not work. So that's attempt number two. Um, what I'm learning from these experiences, these experiments too, is that I need some solder paste. I'm going to see if uh, the craft store in Brainerd has, has some solder paste, I think, when I'm at my office tomorrow. Here, I'm kind of, I don't know what I'm trying here, actually. I guess uh, taking a shot at it with both barrels, with the air gun and the soldering iron tip. Uh, and trying to just get it up to heat because that is really the problem that I'm having is I can't quite get the pins uh, Pieces up to heat at the same time as the metal. There's still a little bit of metal underneath uh, Still a little bit of solder underneath that pin back that I was hoping to get to bond And in a second here you'll see that it didn't really work out very well uh, and Around this time I remembered my dad soldering uh, plumbing in the basement of our house growing up and in a lot of cases where you heat uh, a solder joint will actually suck melted solder into it so long as you're able to heat it uh, over a broad enough area and that was the key to avoiding leaking uh, in a few different products uh, so in this case I'm using that air gun to keep, get heat between the pin and the pin back and it actually starts to work. You can see I'm, I'm melting everything, getting everything hot. It has a side effect that you'll see in just a little bit that wasn't great. Uh, still, it took me a lot longer than somebody who has experience would have uh, had. Um, the other thing that most, um, probably a jeweler would use is not an air, uh, air gun, but instead an actual torch. And I don't have uh, gas for the pencil torches that I bought for just that purpose, so I was using these, this air gun. That and I thought that a torch might actually heat it too much, which is, in the end, what I ended up doing with the air gun anyway. See there's a pretty big blob of extra solder there. 
I got the pin hot enough that it's really, even though I have all the heat removed from it, the solder just stays liquid for a long time. So I finally got everything up to heat. It's kind of a blessing and a curse using the soldering iron tip so that I can hold it in place while I use a solder sucker to remove just a little bit of the excess blob there. See a solder paste, I could probably do this without you seeing any of the solder residue on the outside of it. I'm going to use this um, dental tool, obviously not heated, to hold it down in place while it cools. And here you see what happened. See that stringing? The gems on the front side of the pin have all kind of melted. Uh, which is kind of a problem. It also, you might not be able to tell, but I kind of discolored the hard enamel on the front. Um, and that stuff really, it doesn't dissolve with acetone, so I would have to either really scratch it out and scrape it out to remove it, or uh, just be satisfied with what it is. The white is, has yelled a little, yellowed a little bit, and the red has turned a little bit brown, which is uh, both unfortunate. Uh, I wanted to return this in better condition than I found it. I didn't quite do that, but I did okay. So now you can see that the solder joint actually worked really well. It's holding really well. Uh, the pin that I put on there is definitely a lot broader. The, the contact is a lot broader than what was on the old pin. So I decided to use a little bit of a polish, uh, polishing wheel on there to just remove some of the excess schmutz that I got all over it and uh, make it shine just a little bit better. The end result is, you know, not a huge difference, but it does clean the pin a little bit later on. I did also uh, degrease it and remove the, uh, the chemicals, the flux that I used to uh, melt the solder. If you don't do that, it's actually fairly corrosive to other metals, you find that it'll have a constant effect where it will continue even after you're done with it, uh, corroding the metal, causing things to rust and get really rough. Uh, so you really do want to clean that off anytime you're working with it. you got to remember to clean the part, otherwise you'll end up coming back and find oxides all over the place. Made quite the mess there, but anytime that I dipped this wheel in the, in the polishing compound, uh, it would throw stuff around. Now I decided I was going to use that dental pick to remove these melted jewels. I used a drill bit to kind of clean out the bottoms of them. I'm wearing gloves in this case so that I don't uh, accidentally imprint my fingerprints on the the gems or the the pin itself because I'm going to be using super glue. And if you've seen Beverly Hills Cop, you know that one way that you can actually uh, preserve fingerprints is to use super glue fumes. I don't have uh, an overhead fan set up just yet, so those fumes could very possibly just settle on any fingerprints that I get on them. So I uh, also degrease the pin so that there are no fingerprints on it uh, during this process. I pushed the pin back into the top of a sort of a flat box, a cardboard uh, container for dog food that I'd flipped over so that it would stay in one place. It does spin, which isn't great. Uh, it took me a while to find these two millimeter gems in white and red. Uh, finally found them on Etsy. Couldn't find them on eBay or Amazon or anywhere else. Um, so I found them there and they finally arrived and that's what determined that I was ready to get going. It's kind of hard to open the bags with my uh, gloves on, so I, I did speed up that footage a little bit so you didn't have to watch. And I'm using a small paint, uh, paint palette, is that what it is? Uh, to hold the, the small gems. I measured them at two millimeters uh, with a, a an electronic caliper. I'm using a super glue gel because the gel I seem to remember dries a lot slower than the liquid and that really does pay off in this particular example. I have a toothpick because the tip of the 
super glue container is too thick and would deposit too much, so I dip the to toothpick in the gel super glue, and I use a grease pen to pick up one of those tiny gems and put it in. Let's see if you can spot my first error here. Yeah, I put a white gem on the red stripe. Um, the thing is that I told myself specifically not to do that before I got started. Luckily, the gel is so fresh that it really didn't start to harden yet. Uh, my later errors where I didn't necessarily use the best looking gems, you'll see actually it hardens almost instantaneously in those cases. So now I got a red gem. I used that, that grease pencil because it's slightly sticky. So I get into a pretty good a pretty good uh, rhythm of using just a little bit of gel on the toothpick with my left hand, which is surprising that it works because my left hand is very clumsy. I did speed this up. I'm not that fast, but I do think I did pretty well. Now sometimes they went in crooked, in which case uh, I had to kind of find, had to remove them one or two cases. That crookedness uh, set really fast. Uh, the moment that I touched them, super glue, you can, you can be guaranteed that if there's any time that you need it to not harden fast, it does. I think, yeah, see that one did, that one went in crooked, so I used the knife to pry it out. Try number two, it's a lot more successful. The grease pen trick was actually pretty good. I found that online. It worked fairly well. I do feel like maybe a sharper grease pen uh, would have been useful. Or, I don't know, something could have made it just a little bit stickier. Maybe if I had applied just a little bit of heat to the grease pencil before I started doing this, it might have had a little bit stickier of an end. Uh, sometimes I had to push down on the gems to get them to stick, and uh, once or twice I just snapped off the end of the grease pencil doing that. As you can see, it actually went really, really smooth uh, with that exception of that error, the one before it, and now this grease pencil decided to just pick up two gems, and it just didn't work out all that well. It took me a little bit more work. Um, I also tried unsuccessfully to dip the bottom of one of the gems in the, the super glue, and it just stuck to the toothpick. And uh, at that point, you have to worry that there's super glue on the top of the gem, and if that's the case, it won't shine right. That's also why I never picked any up that I had touched kind of into the socket and then dropped. The same, same exact fear. I just didn't want to have a less, uh, less than shiny finish on those. And you can see it actually turned out pretty well, uh, that discoloration. Uh, if you go back to the beginning of the video, you can really see that discoloration, unfortunately. Uh, but it turned out fairly well after the fact. Here's the before, and then after I return the gems. Remember, adventure is anywhere. I decided to go back to the restaurant and drop off the pin, not only that, but also with a note so that they could find the video.